Praise the Lord. Have you ever seen a group of people somewhere and they were having fun and you weren't? And you said, bless your heart. I'm not, I'm not going to just sit here and let them have fun and I'm not having fun. Well, you know, in heaven, I guarantee you they're having fun right now. And I'm not going to let them be the only ones having a good time. So let's stand tonight and let's worship our God. And let's enter into the presence of the Lord and worship and praise Him. And give Him all the glory and all the honor. He is due. He is worthy to be praised tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to enter into your presence to worship you. And to praise you to allow you to have your way in our hearts and in our lives. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord, for you are truly the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're our Lord. You're our God. You're our Savior. And Father, we worship you tonight and we look forward to all that you have for us in this service. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory tonight. Let me walk, bless the Lord, in the way that was gone, leading straight to that land above. Give me cheer and wave to the sad and cold. Fill my way every day with love. Fill my way every day with love. As I walk with the heavenly dove, oh, let me go all while with a song and a smile. Fill my
something from God. Amen. Amen. This time, speaking of receiving, the ushers are going to come. We're going to receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. You give as God has blessed you. And may the Lord bless you according to your giving. And let's just get in and have church tonight. Let's enjoy the goodness of the Lord because our God's good. And our God's alive and our God is thrilling. And he can put a joy in your heart. And that really is. He told us that is our strength. When you have joy in the Lord, when you know everything's right between you and God, you can have joy in your heart knowing that one day I'm going to leave this old world behind and I'm going home to be with Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. You give as the Lord has blessed you. Brother Morgan, sir.
giving. May the Lord bless you. This time the choir is going to sing. And we want to remind you, remember Bible study, Tuesday night at 730. Come learn more about the God that you're serving. Amen. <laughs> ought to be pretty happy about being on your way to heaven. The good thing is, it's not just a wish. 
It's real. I said it's real. Yeah. So that praise God that they have another little song that they've thrown together. And so uh, they wanted me to hear it tonight, to hear how it sounds and everything. So why not let them experiment on us, right? All the words will be up there. With the words up there and your body out there, there's no excuse. Just join on into this song, a nice happy song about good things from God. Let's sing it if you know it. Amen. Let's do it. Let me hear. 
looking forward to that day. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried our sins far away. God is good tonight. You may go down, everybody. Thank you very much. What a blessing. Praise God. I'm glad the Lord is alive tonight. I want to preach to you out of the Psalms this evening, if that's all right. You may be seated. I'm reading from Psalm 143. We will read the entire Psalm, but that's only 12 verses. So I think you can make it. Let me read this to you. It's an amazing Psalm, and I'm, I'm preaching to you about the model prayer. And that's what this is, the model prayer prayer he began by saying hear my prayer O Lord give ear to my supplications in thy faithfulness answer me and in thy righteousness and enter not into judgment with thy servant for in thy sight shall no man living be justified for the enemy hath persecuted my soul he hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me, now when, just when you think this is negative, it turns a different direction. Yes, David was in a real problem. You've been getting that alert tonight. I'm not sure what that's about, but that's the noise you hear. That wasn't my pacemaker <laughs> or my electric shoulder. Neither of which do I have by the grace of God. Amen. Here's where it changes. He said, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. And here I want to insert something that I came across with, that comes from another Bible version of this same thing, what I just read. The King James says, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. This other version said, Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. See, that's why I don't like unauthorized versions. <laughs> and why are they called unauthorized anyway? Good morning, church. We're so glad to have you tonight. It's wonderful that you joined us just now. What's up with that unauthorized version? I'll take the authorized one if you don't mind. Good old KJV. Because I understand what thee and thou mean. So it's not that difficult. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. 
Under the attack of enemies once more, King David of Israel began to seek God. And he said, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse. That means I sit and think upon the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. In his psalm, which was a song and a prayer, literally, he asked God for several things. This would be a great model for us to base our personal prayer life on, the model prayer. First of all, he said, hear me. And I think I have five or six points in this message. They're short ones. Don't, don't get excited. Well, get excited, but don't get discouraged. Hear me, he said. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. I'm thankful for that, that God hears our prayers and that he hears them speedily. No procrastination with the Lord. He hears it immediately. He responds in his time. And this is a great way to start by praying, not because we have to convince God to listen to us, but we might want to kind of, you know how it is when you put that uh, express mail envelope out there and you pay the extra money so that you can get it to its destination the next day or within two days instead of letting the postal service piddle with it for 30 days. You pay extra for this expeditious delivery of what you're trying to get delivered. And so it was all right for him to say, hear me speedily, God. I need a quick answer for this. I, I, I don't, I'm in a bind. I need you right now. Like that one preacher said, he said, Pastor, I'm in a bind. I'm in a real concubine. He said, I'm in a bind. So when you're in a bind and you need a quick answer, you can rest assured that God is listening. And he may not come when you want him, but he'll be always right on time, like the song said. Right on time. He knows what he's doing tonight. Next, he said, cause me to hear. So first, he said, God, I want you to hear. And now I want you to enable me to hear. I won't, don't want this to be a unilateral conversation. I want it to be a bilateral conversation, a two-way conversation like you have with your wife. You want it to go both ways, not one talking and the other not listening. Nobody wants to go through that. Bilateral. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. And I wondered about this. How do you hear a virtue like loving kindness? Maybe he meant about his loving kindness. Maybe he meant to hear from the Lord in a kind voice. Lord, I want you to hear what I'm praying, and then when you talk to me, I want you to cause me to hear an answer that is loving kindness. I would like a nice answer, Lord, not a corrective answer. Well, whatever God decides that we need, we need it. Amen. Amen. I don't have something in, in the bag for you tonight. I didn't bring something to throw you in the center of your forehead. I came to talk about the goodness of God. And surely thy loving kindness, O Lord, David said, is better than life itself. And it is. I want the loving kindness of God on my life. I don't want God mad at me. I don't like to feel like God's upset with me. I don't want him to feel disappointed. I want him to be pleased so that when I get to heaven, I won't hear him say, you did a sorry job, you sorry servant. I ought to throw you out, get in here. Well, if I can at least make it in, slip a foot in the door, I'll be happy about that, you know. But I'd rather hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If I'm going to hear something, let me hear something like that. So God, help me to hear. This seems to be an expression of his sense of inability. We've all been in this place. Where we say, God, I need you to help me to be this way and that way. Where we feel like in ourselves we're having difficulty being a certain way that's pleasing to the Lord. So it's noble, isn't it?
to pray, Lord, help me, cause me to hear. Cause me to hear. It kind of reminds me of the guy that said in the Gospels, Lord, help our unbelief. If, a, if we're unbelieving, then God, help us to have the right attitude and help us to believe. Help us to hear what you're saying because I'm putting my trust in you. And since I'm trusting in you, I need you to help me to be what I'm supposed to be. And isn't that what the Holy Ghost is all about? To empower the believer, to enable the believer, to prepare the believer. The trouble is a lot of times we don't have a model prayer or any kind of prayer. And he can't really help us because we're not asking for help. But when you ask God for help and you say, Lord, hear me. I need you to hear me right now. And I want you to help me to hear you when you answer me in your loving kindness. This is a great way to pray. Let me be more aware of the loving kindness of God at the beginning of each day. He said, let me hear it in the morning. Not some mystical utterance of some gibberish when we lie down and fade away. When we get up in the morning, and we see the beautiful sun shining. Enjoy it while you have it. But thank God for this beautiful day. And walk with him and talk with him. And in the morning, start that day with our thoughts toward God. It makes a difference in the day. A lot of people rise up to face their problems. But if we would rise up and think about our blessings, we'd be a lot better off. Number three, cause me to know, he said. Don't just help me to hear, but cause me also to know the way wherein I should walk. I not only want to hear you, God, he said, he prayed. He said, but I want you to instruct me on what way I should go. Have you ever prayed that God would give you insight into a decision that you need to make? Yeah. God, help me to know because it's all confusing to me. It's all darkness and hard to sort it all out. But the good thing is that when we give it to the Lord, he will cause us to know which way we should go. Now, most of the time, the problem happens when people know in their mind what they want to do and the way they want to go, even if it's away from everything God has called them to. And they will say, God is leading me in another direction. God always leads in the same direction. He does not turn around and lead you back the other way. He leads us in the same direction. Now that may be meaningless to you bored looking people out there tonight. But when you need direction, it comes alive and you realize, hey, I don't know what to do here. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. God help me. I'm listening. Tell me what to do. In the, he also wanted God to help him with guidance, is what he was saying. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. In the Westminster chime, on some of your clocks, there is a prayer. And these are the words, but so you know what I'm referring to, you will, I will uh, give you the tune along with the words. Now, I'm not a professional singer, but I'll do my best. <clears throat> He's praying for him. Lord, cause him to sing. <laughs> Lord, through this hour, be thou our guide, so by thy power no foot foot shall slide. You ever heard a clock ring like that? Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. That is a prayer. And that's what it says. Lord, through this hour, be thou our guide. So by thy power, no foot shall slide. Nobody shall lose out. No one shall be destroyed. When 
You are trusting in the Lord as the psalmist said he was. I mean really trusting in the Lord. Not going down the toilet, flushed expression on your face, saying I trust in the Lord as you go down the pipe. I'm talking about really trusting in the Lord. In the darkness and in the valley of the shadow of death, you can say I don't know what's going on. I can't see everything. I don't understand. But one thing I know, through this hour, he will be my guide. And if I'll just do whatever he says and follow the lighted path of God's truth, everything's going to be all right. And that's trusting the Lord because you can't figure it out yourself sometimes. You can't always figure it out. In fact, I don't know anyone that can figure it all out. And most of the time, we've got to look to him and trust him and know that he'll guide me if I really want to know. If I guide myself, I'll be in the darkness and it will not prosper. But if I follow the pathway of the Lord where there is light and that lamp under my feet, I know that it's going to turn out right every time. So how will I know? How will I know if it's really God leading me? Pray, pray, pray. Put this model prayer to work. And God gave you a promise in Isaiah 58, 10. He said, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity wait a minute if I draw out my soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul that's helping someone else That's giving to others. What's wrong with that? You're the church of the living God here. I mean, you're supposed to be all about this. Aren't we? If you do that, you see that afflicted soul help to satisfy their affliction. Draw out thy soul to the hungry. Feed that person. That's in need. Then your light will arise in obscurity. That's in the darkness of when something's obscure, when you can't see, when things are clouded. Your light shall rise, and thy darkness will be as the noonday, he said. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. I like that word, fat. <laughs> Go into the department store and ask the PC woke person there, where's the fat people section? <laughs> and they'll say, uh, <clears throat> excuse me? You mean the plus sizes? <laughs> no, the fat people section. So what's the word for that fuel tank hanging on the front of our bodies? It's fat. It's fuel. Muscle burns fat as fuel to make it go. If I didn't have a little body fat, I couldn't do that. That's right. Because fatness was a sign of blessing, sustenance, having more than you need and eating more than you need, having everything that you could ever want. God will satisfy thy soul, he said, with fatness. I may not want a fat body, but I would love to have a fat soul. I want my cup running over. What cup? Well, my, this whole suit has a lot of different cups on. Let them all run over with the goodness of God and the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah! And satisfy thy soul in drought. Shall we worry about what is coming? We should be wise. We should prepare. And we should know they're trying to shut down the agricultural industry and all kinds of other things. It's all in the manifesto I taught some of you about. It's all in there. It's all part of the plan. But God will supply his people. He didn't say it may 
not be in adversity, but you can trust that he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He said, David said, I've ne there's a couple things I've never seen. And one of them is I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I've never seen his seed begging for bread. So he said, God will supply your every need. And the more you dish it out, the more that God will give it right back to you. The more you give and the more you help somebody else, the more that God will help us. Amen. I'm reminded of this brother back when I was preaching about tithing and giving offerings and giving. You remember that before conference? This brother came up to me and he shook my hand and I'd sensed that there was money there. And I started to pull back and he clamped on my hand, wouldn't let go. He said, no, sir, no, sir. I said, what? Was he telling me that? He said, you know my financial situation and I've never given you anything. He said, please take this because I want God to take care. I have needs. I said, okay, brother, all right. What was I going to do? Kick his blessing down? So I'm not going to do that. This man's trying to trust God and respond to what I preached. So I took it. It was 30 bucks. I counted it later. <laughs> 30 bucks. I said, man, bless him, Jesus. He has stepped out. He has put to work what I preached. He's trying to believe God. He has a financial need. Take care of him, Lord. And I told him, I said, now you get a hold of me. Let me know. When God takes care of you for what you've done here tonight. And he said, yes. He said, about three days later, he called, he texts me and he said, guess what? I got a $500 bonus at work. <laughs> You're going to say that's just a coincidence. No, it was not a coincidence. And I've seen this over and over and over and over and over. Some people don't believe God. They think it's some kind of televangelistic trick. But there is a reality in giving to the Lord. So I got to conference and I talked about it. And some other guy comes up and greases my palm. I don't even remember who it was. I said, who was that? Somebody gave me a wad of money. They're trying, and they're, it's biblical. They're trying to give to the man of God because they believe God said, He that blesses you, I will bless them. I understand that, and that's true. The reason I don't promote that is because I don't really go to, after people's money. I'm not about that at all. I never have been, and I am not going to start. But uh, if you want to do that, uh, I'll be at the door tonight. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Don't grease my palm. Grease the Lord's palm. Get an envelope back there and label it world missions or servicemen's work or some cause that you want to give it to and we'll direct it into the right place. Amen. That's where it ought to go. And so if you do that, you look and see. The Lord said, prove me, test me, and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and bless you so much that you won't even be able to contain it. That's the kind of God I'm talking about tonight. So in Psalm 32, 8, he said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. We're talking about God guide me. And teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding. Even though you talk to them, here's the Bible telling you they do not have understanding. Well, I tell my horse to roll over, he rolls over. That may be true, but he has no understanding. Said they must be held, their mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Why? Because God's going to direct your path. But you got to be asking, and you have to be listening. And if you really are, and you really intend to listen to Him and do what He's telling you to do, He will direct us. Hallelujah. Number four, teach me, He said. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, 
Thy spirit is good. The next thing he said is, lead me. Lead me into the land of uprightness. God took care of all this in the New Testament blessings in Christ package when he gave us the Holy Ghost. For he said in John 16 verse 5, and I'm almost done here, 16 verse 5, Jesus was saying to them, Now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? No, none of you are asking me where I'm going. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. What had he said to them? He said, I'm going away. I'm going back to the Father where I came from. Back to heaven. Back to the throne of God. I am leaving you. And they were full of sorrow. But he said, none of you is asking me, where are you going? But you're sitting there and you're sad and blue because you can't do the boogaloo. <laughs> as the song used to say. That's not what Jesus said. Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> Look at verse 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, he said, the comforter will not come to you. It's good for you. It's better for us that Jesus went back. Because if he hadn't ascended after his resurrection, and he hadn't sat at the right hand of God, he would not have sent the Holy Ghost back down here and started the church on the day of Pentecost. This should tell you right there, the Holy Ghost is not Jesus. Because he wouldn't have said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send somebody else back if the Holy Ghost is the same as Jesus. He went back to the Father. He was not with the Father. He was on earth. The Father was in heaven. He said, I'm going back to the Father in heaven, and I will pray him, and he will send you another comforter. That means one besides me. Instead of me being here comforting you disciples, God will send you the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, and He will abide with you. Amen. And He said when He has come, He will reprove the world. That means correct them and uh, rebuke them of their sin. And He will uh, speak of righteousness, judgment, sin, because they believe not on me. But look at this. He said of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged and I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. That's Jesus talking. He just said the Holy Ghost, when he has come, will not speak of himself. And then he says, he's going to talk about me. Another proof that the Holy Ghost and Jesus are not the same person. Amen. He said, he shall glorify me, he shall receive of mine, and he will show it unto you. What did he say? He will guide you. But there's another place where Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth, and he will teach you all things, and he will bring all things to your remembrance. He will come and be that ever-present paracletos at your side, that guide, that encourager, that uh, one who says, come on, you can do this. You got this, because I am with you. And when you realize, hey, God is with me, I know that I I can do whatever he sends me to do. He would not call you if you weren't able to do the job. He would not commission you if it wasn't something within your skill set. Moses said, I am just a child. I cannot speak. And God said, what in the world's wrong with you, Moses? Who am I? Who do you think I am? Tell him, I am sent you. I'll be with your mouth. I will be with you. I will speak through you. And I'll send Aaron to help you. You got this, Moses. Moses, and all the way down through the line, wherever a man or woman of God has 
said, God, I need you. You got to show me. You got to teach me. You have to guide me. Lord, let me hear your voice. God says, I'll be there. I'll guide you with my eye. I'll be right there with you. And I will take care of you. I will provide for you. Yet the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Hallelujah. Come on, all you teenagers were jumping around at conference. What's wrong with tonight? This is a good night to jump around. Amen. If you get on your feet once in a while, maybe Jesus would strengthen those feeble knees and the arms that hang down. But because we don't put forth any effort, we don't get anything from God. We watch everybody else get the blessing. Well, tonight, I don't want to watch everybody else get the blessing. I do, but I want to give one too. I want something from God in this service too. I need the touch of the hand of the master. Amen. We need a good old Holy Ghost service and a revival in this church. Maybe we can have a revival. What do you think? Well, we can pray all week long. And we can go to church and praise God all week long. And maybe you say, that's too much for me. But in the book of Revelation, they praise God 24-7. They're constantly yelling out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. By your own blood, you have redeemed us. Amen. You gave yourself for us. And they're praising God and rolling around on the floor and throwing their crowns out across the room because in heaven they worship God. And when I get there, I want them to say, man, you didn't do too bad down here, but let's see what you can do now. I'll do the Jed Clampet. Do the Jed Clampet dance. Say, woo, woo, and have a good church service tonight. Come on, get us some music going. What are you waiting for? Can't get any music around here. But when they start firing up the beat and the choir begins to sing, somebody just said to me, I thank God for your church. I said to my wife and I yesterday, we went to visit this lady. She said, we thank God for the church because you can't find churches that have a choir anymore. All they want to do is make it dark and shine the, the lights and play the rock and roll and the hard music. I said, but I like the choir because they sing like the angels. It may not be the best angels, but they sing like angels anyway. They are. I appreciate them tonight. Amen. I appreciate all of you. It's not an easy thing to be in there and give yourself to God in that way. It interferes with your schedule. It costs you a little bit of gas money, a lot of gas money, more after the first of the year. All of that, but we sing as unto the Lord, and it's such a blessing. Man, you can have a dead meat funeral service going, and they get up to sing, and all of a sudden God starts doing something and, and moving in the congregation. I'm excited tonight. I, I just refuse. You know, we all have our battles and we all get down in the mouth sometimes, but I just refuse to let that stinking spirit take over my life. I despise that. When I find myself discouraged and I find myself looking on the dark side of things, it makes me mad at myself. And it makes me want to go pray, God, hear my prayer speedily. I don't like this, Lord. And you say it, I want to hear it. Guide me. Show me the way I should go. Ushers, come join the church service tonight. Put down your ushing for a few minutes. The world won't go to hell without you watching. Just come on down here and worship the Lord tonight. God will touch you. You got to get up and get moving and put forth some faith. So let's do that. I want to do that tonight. How about you? Lord, I need a touch. I need a touch. Say, but you're the preacher. I know, but us preachers need the touch of God too. All right. Let's just get in his presence tonight. Pray that model prayer. 
Lord, show me the way I should go. Teach me and guide me tonight. I need to hear your voice. Let's go. Yes. I don't have to fear 
You have called me from my sorrow to gladness, and I have you. What more could I want? So raise my faith to live higher. Set my spirit on fire. to everlasting you are God revive your church Lord we know we're not dead but maybe there's a few things let us go back to that first love and back to the first works that the Holy Ghost may have free reign among us for these are your called and your chosen people. Cast us not away in your hot displeasure, but revive us by the Spirit of the Lord. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. We love you, we're praying, and we believe you. Look forward to all that you're going to do in the weeks ahead. And now we bless your wonderful name and thank you for all your great goodness toward us through Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And the church said, Amen. Amen, so be it. God is good. And we trust that you have a great week in the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed when you're finished praying.
Amen. I'm sorry they quit playing on you. They kind of killed the mood, but that's okay. We're done. We're done here. Let's do this. All right. Have a good week. I think uh, I'll probably teach some classes this week, so students, auditors, please be watching. Be w <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's okay. Go ahead. Huh? But be watching the website so you'll know, okay, what we're going to do. Have all your notes for your regular classes because I'm not promising you anything. I just don't know yet. I don't want to call the class and not be prepared for it. So I have to figure out if I'll be able to pull everything together to be able to uh, teach them to you. But just watch the schedule. Count on a regular schedule if you don't hear anything, okay? Prayer meeting tomorrow night. Looking forward to a good one. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you then. Amen. All right.